Um, so I'm very excited about this. We, as, I, as you all know, we did this class last year. This was one of my favorite parts. Um, people had great things to say, and um, I'm excited to hear what you have to say as well. Um, and then we were really glad that you're all part of this class. I think this is an incredibly powerful group, um, a group with a lot of skills and a lot of talent. And I'm excited uh, both for, at some point in time, you to meet last year's class, and then also to see what you do in the community as you move forward. Um, I was, it's funny, I was, um, I was riding the orange line yesterday, and I ended up getting onto a car with one of last year's uh, class members who was graduating. And she was telling me on the ride all of the different things that she's done um, after the Civic Academy the different things that it's kind of jogged her mind to say, oh, maybe I should do this. So for example, she went to the mayor's coffee hour yesterday and um, she brought a neighbor with her because she knew that neighbor didn't know a lot of information about what was going on and um, she wanted that person to be connected and to be able to learn what was going on so she encouraged her to come. That's such a little thing, but it makes such a big difference in individuals' lives. And so um, I'm excited to see what this class, um, what this class comes up with after after graduating. So, but I know you're all excited for your speeches, so we will get yeah, yeah. started. And who's the first person? <laughs> all right, Mary Cole, you're starting us it's off. A Come on, bless you. Yeah. Okay, so take your time. <laughs> All set? Um, my uh, elevator speech is to the mayor. I had the good uh, um, fortune to meet him in the elevator. Good morning, Mr. Mayor. My name is Mary Cole from Charlestown, where I was born and raised and hope to remain in my retirement years. I love living in Boston with its diverse cultures and neighborhoods, outstanding museums, sports teams, and easy access to public transportation. However, housing in the city has become too expensive for the average citizen. Property values have skyrocketed in Charlestown. Unfortunately, my retirement income has not. Uh, my fear is that I will soon be priced out of my home. When I learned about the city's Department of Neighborhood Development, I was encouraged. It was a relief to learn that among the programs and services offered, there is a senior home repair program which offers zero interest deferred loans to older homeowners. Also, the property tax work off program is of great interest to me as a means to reduce ex expenses. I applaud your aggressive agenda regarding the city's housing issues, particularly your goals to provide more affordable housing and to reduce displacement among city residents. Thank you for your plan to revamp the city's inclusionary development policy and your creation of the Office of Housing Stability. I am particularly grateful for the city's investment in rehabilitating the Bunker Hill housing development. I'm hopeful that all these initiatives will allow more seniors to remain in their neighborhoods. Your legislative priorities are also impressive, supporting a bill that would prohibit no-fault evictions for people over 75 years of age and a bill expanding eligibility for the Medicare Savings Program. I promise to support your efforts and advance your agenda by contacting my city councilor and state representatives, urging them to file and approve budget allocations to support these valuable programs and any new initiatives. Please increase outreach efforts to make sure that all Boston residents are aware of the programs and services that may assist them in continuing to reside in the city. These programs are wonderful, but we need more publicity to reach our goal of reducing displacement in the city. Thank you for your leadership. <laughs> Certificate of Completion on behalf of the Age Strong Commission presented to Mary Cole on the 9th of May 2019 
for the successful completion of the A. Strong Boston Senior Civic Academy. And it's signed by both the mayor mm -hmm. and myself. Thank you very much. So congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> All right, next up we have Roger. camera huh? <laughs> all right tell me when you're ready, I'm ready. okay uh, my topic is on pedestrian safety uh, my name is Roger Teepee I have been a resident of South Boston for four and a half years I no longer own a car but I enjoy walking in Boston and I especially use public transit to get around daily I want to be able to get across East Broadway in South Boston just to reach my bus stop in a safe manner this street carries cars uh, delivery vehicles uh, school buses and three MBTA bus routes. I personally had four near misses with collisions with vehicles on this corner myself. The 2018 Tufts Health Plan study for persons over 65 indicates that 55 percent of the uh, senior population do own a car, 45 percent do not. That represents at least 31,000 potential walkers who do not own a car and have to get around mostly or completely on foot. In Boston's Vision Zero report, covering all ages for the years of 2016 to 18, pedestrian fatalities have dropped 50 percent from 14 to 7, but pedestrian injuries have only dropped 24 percent from 893 to 680. Pedestrians, including seniors, do, do get hit at intersections because drivers, bikers, and walkers do not follow basic safety rules like stop, look both ways, and yield. So why are seniors like me more at risk when we cross the street? We walk slower, we may have vision, uh, hearing, or mobility limitations, and when we are hit, we tend to have more serious injuries. But like all other age groups, we also, as seniors, jaywalk, cross against the lights, don't look both ways, or we're looking at our phones. <laughs> Improving pedestrian safety would make Boston more age-friendly by getting seniors out of their homes more often and more actively engaging with their community. In order to age strong, seniors need periodic reminders to practice being a safe pedestrian every time they cross the street. I'm calling specifically on the Age Strong Commission to conduct an educational campaign to empower seniors to take charge of their own safety whenever they cross the street, starting with a feature article or articles in the seniority magazine, Boston Seniority Magazine. Thank you. Congratulations, Roger. Thank you. Here you go. Good morning. I'm actually speaking to Brian Golden that I ran into in the elevator. Good morning, Brian. I hope you remember me. I'm Mary Regan from Brighton. I don't know if you've known. I've lived in Brighton all my life, and I'd like to remain there. But unfortunately, that's becoming a very difficult to do. One of the things that I love about Boston is its diversity. It's diversity in all things, ages, income, uh, ethnic groups, race, religion. We all contribute to making this a wonderful place to live. But if something isn't done, Boston's going to become a city of the well-to-do and the poor. Our neighborhoods are emptying out because there's such little affordable housing for sale or for rent. I know Mayor Walsh wants to have 69,000 units built by 2030. Hmm. Approximately 18,000 have already been built. Unfortunately, too many of them are luxury housing, at least in Alston Brighton. Too many of them are studios and one bedrooms. That precludes families from renting or buying and staying in the city. Currently, I know that developers must provide 13% of their units to be affordable in their buildings, or else put money in a fund to build elsewhere. I think we need to raise that rate to 20%. I think we need to encourage developers to build larger apartments. I think we need to encourage them to build more affordable and larger condos. These condos need to be remain um, deed restricted so they become always owner occupied and affordable. I ask that you support these initiatives. In doing so, these will make us our neighborhood stabilize and allow residents to stay 
in the city if they want to. It'll prevent Boston from becoming a city of well-to-do transients. Thank you. Uh, good morning. My topic is uh, regarding cannabis shops. And I'm addressing um, City Councilor Andrea Campbell. Good morning, Ms. Campbell. My name is Sandra Wedgworth, and I live, live in Dorchester. I've lived there all my life. And um, growing up in the city, there was much to be desired there. There were local uh, business shops in the area within walking distance. On Blue Hill Avenue, for example, there was a hardware store, a meat market, grocery store, and bakery. All of these businesses are gone now. My main concern, and it's really distressing me, is how many can cannabis shops are enough. Um, currently, there are four proposed shops within less than a half a mile of my um, house. And um, neighbors were all concerned. We've met with um, several city um, We've met with, we've actually had several meetings uh, with residents focusing on this issue and how it's going to impact us. Um, one in particular has been, one of the shops has been approved to be within, um, very close to a local high school. And according to the regulations, uh, the cannabis shop should not be within 500 feet of a school. I have concerns because I have grandchildren going to this high school, and I'm concerned what they're going to see when they are walking on their way home. Uh, residents are concerned about the, the, the additional traffic that's going to come into the area and, and the criminal element that may come out of having these shops there. Uh, another issue is the, the mayor's proposed um, age-friendly initiative it's supposed to make the city more accessible to seniors. We don't have a lot of businesses there. Instead of all of these cannabis shops, we would like to see businesses that we can go to that can provide us with necessities that we can walk to and not have to get on public transportation. Some of us don't drive anymore. So um, what I'm asking you, Ms. Campbell, is that you will look at the regula regulations regarding the, um, the business issues and see if we can limit the number of cannabis uh, shops that, is, that are right in our neighborhood. And thank you very much for your consideration. So um, my talk is about employment of seniors, and it's to any and all city and state and federal department heads. Hello, my name is Paulette Durrett. I've lived in Boston for over 70 years. I attended the Boston Public Schools, and I have two degrees from UMass Boston. I have a pension from the City of Boston Retirement Board. I really like the cultural opportunities that living in Boston affords. However, the thing that makes it hard for me to live in Boston is the lack of paid employment opportunities for older citizens. We still have a lot to offer in experience, discipline, and wisdom. We also have time. This issue, being unemployed, becomes increasingly important and difficult for me as I get older because I am over income for many home improvement programs that the city offers and cannot afford to purchase, for instance, new windows for my house without taking out a personal loan. 
Additionally, I cannot afford to attend many cultural events or travel due to a limited income. While it is certainly noteworthy that I, that I volunteer with over six agencies in the city, it would be better if some of my efforts were rewarded with a paycheck. The city of Boston and younger Bostonians would benefit by seeing me as a role model for their future employment efforts. Can your office help by employing older Bostonians? Thank you for your time and for listening. I'm, I'm talking to the state senator. Good morning, Senator. I'm so glad to see you here today. I, I want to, I've been wanting to thank you for your sponsorship of Senate Bill 1207, the one that uh, proposes to uh, levy a, a, a surcharge on, on private parking garages to reduce air pollution and use the funds to uh, support uh, bicycle and pedestrian infrastructure. I think these are great ideas, and I, I see that as a very creative carbon tax, which is one of the big deals that we need to address climate change. I think we often get hung up on the cost of how to address climate change, and this is a real creative and uh, forward-looking way to do that. Um, I am also really happy to see that Mayor Walsh has put your bill as part of his legislative priority for this session. I moved to the South End in 1974. It's been 50, uh, 45 years now, and, uh, well, we bought a condo for $14,000. So you know that I've seen some changes in this city, and I am really pleased to see the diversity and the progressive um, trajectory that we're on here, and I think this bill helps to uh, support that. I was speaking with Brad Swing, the city's uh, director of climate, I mean, um, energy policy and prog programs, and he is also part of this uh, planning for future changes in the city driven by climate change. I am also involved with a group of, with several groups of elders and other people, other folks, who are, would you meet with us? Who in your office should I talk to, to uh, arrange a meeting? Thank you. Again, if, if Allison says two minutes, you don't have to cut it short. Keep going. We just want to let you know time is up. All right. Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Ethel Duncan. I was born and raised in the city of Boston. I lived in the south, the um, Rock, city of Roxbury, for uh, 45 years, and then we moved to um, Dorchester. I hated Dorchester, so I'm back in Roxbury. Um, <laughs> I didn't have anything prepared for today because the topic that I was planning to, that I wanted to write about, is um, policing and security in Boston, and that didn't happen during this course. But I feel that everything that we learned and that was um, provided to us was was did make it a better would make it a better quality of life for. Um, age strong for senior citizens. Um, the other thing that I thought about was hoarding. I had um, spoke about it 
to other um, members of the staff, and they gave me information where I could go to find out about it, which I haven't, but I plan to. Um, I've done volunteering all my life since I've been an adult, and I have worked for, volunteered for AARP. I had um, a nice senior woman that I went to her house and did her, her um, bills every month until she got sick and went in the hospital. And I didn't do any, take any more clients after that because I was really hurt about that. And with the policing part, where my son was killed uh, 14 years ago, I have a hard time during this time of the year to socialize or what have you because I think about my son. Sunday being Mother's Day is the worst day of my life. And um, I haven't planned or done anything for the last 14 years because of it. Um, so that's my passion, and I appreciate the, the being accepted to this class, and I will take everything that was um, um, given to us and use it in um, pursuing my um, volunteering efforts. Thank you. Good morning, class of 219, <laughs> age strong. My name is Gwendolyn Farrell, and I'm here. My concern and my passion is for health prevention measures for the seniors as we grow older. That's my topic. I lived in Hyde Park for over 40 years. Um, my greeting from England. I realize that Boston is a place that everyone I would invite to live here. Why? Because it's a beautiful place. The environment is beautiful, fresh air, friendly neighborhood, and the transportation and all that for me, education is the top here. I love it. Uh, however, as I grow older, living in Massachusetts and also being a healthcare, holistic healthcare, healthcare giver, I, my concern and my passion is how do we grow old, older with preventive measures, taking care of ourselves, be independent as we grow older without having that feeling and that fear behind us that after you retire or you wind up in a nursing home. How can we foster funds to create facilities where our elderly can learn, create education facilities such like um, UMass that has a program there that, you know, the elderly can learn, where we can go and learn about the high tech. Um, it places that we can, after retirement, have a B plan, rather than expecting to have a, t so, so my passion <laughs> is my time. My passion is um, security, safe environment. How can we foster money from our Medicare and Medicaid system to ensure that we don't be under attack. Elderly abuse, we're talking about depression, um, dementia, time up. So these are my passion. So we, we be lobbying. I volunteer myself to help in this area, to lobby, to make sure that our elderly shape the future for future generation elderly. God bless you. Thank you for your listening time. Thank you, Rita. Congratulations. Thank you. Very good. All right, Sharon. Our speaker. Short and sweet. <laughs> Am I, um, I'm addressing the commissioner. Hello, my name is Sharon Keyes and I live in Dorchester for 28 years. I really like being a homeowner 
in Boston. However, the issue that makes it hard for me to live in Boston are the rising costs and utilities to maintain a home in Boston. This becomes increasingly important as I get older because I'm on a fixed income and many of my friends are too. If this problem isn't solved soon, many of our friends, including myself, may lose their homes and forced to live somewhere else. To fix this issue, we need opportunities for seniors to gain employment. We need you to communicate with the various aging strong agency caseworkers to keep in contact with their clients and to make sure they are safe and to be an assistance to them. And we also need to make our city officials accountable for their actions in helping the neighborhood they represent. And what can you do to help me? morning. I'm speaking to anyone and everyone that will listen with an open mind. <laughs> I'm Cynthia Cornelius and I've resided in Boston for over 49 years. Actually for 49 years. And this morning I'd like to engage you all in a cause that's very passionate to me. So for the next two minutes I'd like to engage you in a true scenario of role reversal. So what I would need from everyone right now, except for the cameraman, is to close your eyes and imagine, listen, and just imagine that you're a 67-year-old African-American American female with several health issues. You walk with a cane and you stay stressed out of your mind all the time. Reason being, you've been couch surfing for almost 10 years, even sleeping in your car from time to time, which actually was recently stolen and totaled. And so what do you do now? Yes, you've applied to numerous apartments over the years, only to have the yearly updates mailed to you to see if you're still interested. And those updates were mailed to one of your relatives that is allowing you to use their mailing address. OK, so you're just one of tons of homeless individuals but at no fault of your own. You need a place to call home. You need a place to call home. Yes, you need a place to call home. So now, reverse your role back to your true reality. Open your eyes and join me in strongly supporting, advocating for the homeless senior citizens as well as homeless individuals in Boston. Thank you. My name is Peter Walsh and I'm a lifelong resident of Rosendale uh, for 71 years and I'd like to uh, speak to Mayor Walsh about this, uh, the drug crisis, the opioid crisis in Boston, you know. 40% uh, of the elderly are on five prescriptions or more. 17% of the elderly abuse their medications. Most of these medications that are abused are pain medications. Alcohol is the primary uh, abused drug in our society, uh, followed by pain relievers. Uh, but the, the elderly are particularly uh, in danger of, uh, of the pain relievers because they can't metabolize like younger, younger people the, these drugs. And, uh, and also alcohol the same way, you know. I like to focus mainly on Oxycontin. That seems to be the, the main uh, drug of choice and uh, the street drug, but also for the elderly. They, you can fall into a problem if, uh, for the elderly if you go in for an operation for hip, knees, or shoulders, or whatever, you know. And it's found out by Harvard Medical School that three days 
on oxycotton is optimum. And after three days, you become addicted. And that means that if you stop taking the drug, then you suffer consequences of flu-like symptoms, cramps, you know, sweats, and, and, and it's kind of very, uh, it loses its advantage. And what happens is doctors for, uh, have given people, uh, generally speaking, you know, a, a bottle of Oxycontins to take home to administer to themselves, you know. And if these, and what happens after 30 days of taking these, you have a habit. And uh, so I'd like to address the person to say that uh, to the mayor that, you know, a law or rule should be made that a doctor cannot give more than three days of Oxycontins and then downsize the, uh, the medication to another medication. And I think that would be beneficial uh, to everyone, you know. So that's about it. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, I'm in the elevator talking to Miss Shea. <laughs> and we know, I, I know Emily and she knows me, so I can address, good morning, Emily. Good morning. You know me, I'm Kara. I've been in the Roxbury area for better than 80 years. And I have an older home there. And I really have a serious issue. Um, like I said, my home is older than, older than 100 years. <laughs> and there's always something wrong with it. You know, it might be a leaky faucet, furnace, windows, roof, whatever. And I know there are small repair programs out there that handle medium repairs and large repairs as well. But I'm dealing with another issue and I just don't know where to turn. And I need, it's a, a developer has torn down a home behind mine, okay, and erected a, a multi-family dwelling. And there was a, a retaining wall behind there. And instead of fixing the retaining wall, he put up another wall between there. The retaining wall is crumbling and it's causing my property to erode. And I need to know what I need to do about that. And I would like to make an appointment with you or somebody from your staff that can help me to navigate the system to find out what steps I need to get this issue resolved. Anything you can do to help me will be mostly appreciated. Thank you. These are some, uh, some powerful talks. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Good job. Thank you. All right. Who is next? Good morning, Mr. Mayor. My name is Lauren Thompson. I'm a lifelong resident of Roxbury, a public servant for my entire professional career, and a dedicated community volunteer and advocate. My parents were uh, public servants, my siblings are public servants, my nephew and my son are all public servants. A major, a major issue impacting Boston middle aged strong population is the lack of 55 and up home ownership communities. As you are aware, Mr. Mayor, Roxbury is, is experiencing gentrification as the South End did a couple of decades ago. The middle income population is being forced out by greed. The median cost per square foot in Boston is $700 compared to $252 in the state of Massachusetts. This is a 6% increase from last year and is expected to increase at least 5% in 2020. Middle, in, middle class is an ambiguous label. Technically, those of us who fall into this category fall between the lowest earners and the highest earners. The Pew Research in Center defines the middle class as those earning 67 to 200% of the median household income. 
the 2017 American Community Survey, states that the median income in Boston is $85,691. There is only one 55 and up home ownership community in Boston, which is in High Park, and which is not conducive for aging in your home. There are three floors. Um, it's, it's very, very big, and you're restricted to uh, 55 and up. Everyone who lives in the property must be, must be 55. Um, the 55 and up home ownership community, it fosters, uh, it fosters community. It fosters socialization, and it fosters health, among other things. So, Mr. Mayor, we are asking you to develop more, uh, more opportunities for home ownership for 55 and up, especially middle, middle, middle income uh, population. Please focus more on us. Please focus more on Boston's age-strong population. Just as you're focusing on students, bike and scooter riders, and billion-dollar companies. Thank you. Oh. Graduation time. I was, I said that. Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Lillian O'Neill. I'm a resident of Roxbury. I am um, Beacon Hill Scholar, resident poet of Beacon Hill Scholars. I am Poet Laureate for Roxbury. My speech is on H119S699. This is called Senior po Poet Power. Let me tell you how mass senior action set two bills in motion. Congress created an opportunity for streamlined enrollment to expand eligibility and assistant eligibility and assistant program. Eleven states were included. Why was Massachusetts prohibited? They needed it more. Because of the incomes, they were moved from health care list. Why weren't they included? They needed to access these programs. Some questions I found ask, myself asking. This was a time when senior power was needed to knock down barriers. They needed to bridge the gap, affordable health care. So Carolyn Villers, she um, is the um, owner um, of Mass Senior Action, which I am a member of. Um, went to work. She knew we just don't take it. We, make, we take charge. She knew we needed sponsors, Senator Lewis and Representative Altrino. She pulled together members of, uh, together. She knew we were in trouble and our bill was going down. Her members were blue, but this time they wore sailor hats carrying inner tubes. Words on them, mayday, mayday. Bus loads came. Seniors carried cane with canes and walkers. Seniors who had lost their sight. For Seniors over 70 and 80 years old carried buckets of petitions for the bill at uh, for H1199 and S699 to the Mayor Baker's office. Mayday, Mayday, down the main hall. The state has seen that in mass senior action in charge, and they knew that if the blues came to the state house, they just don't take it. They fight back. No time to wait. No assistance to pay cost fuel, the cost of um, Medicaid for basic, basic needs. As age creeps up and health creeps out the door, they spend more of, than 20% of the income. Health care cliff put into action. Bill H11 and 6S99 in motion. 
They knew Carolyn and the Blue Shirts would be watching, and if there was no action, they would be turned. Mayday. Mayday. Oh, okay. Okay. Hi, my name is Bernadette Kempf, and I'm speaking to the Lower Mills Civic Association. My name is Bernadette Kempf, and I represent Dorchester Neighbors. We're a 501c3 organization designed to help elders remain in their own homes well into their golden years. The intent is to include each neighborhood in Dorchester, including the most underserved, un underserved and poorest neighborhoods in the city. As you see in the handout covering volunteer services, which I just handed out to Emily and to others this morning, we are looking for talent and experience in the areas of designing services for members, attending community meetings, computer website and database development, volunteer recruitment, and fundraising. We need these skills to develop Dorchester neighbors so that it will be helpful to everyone. On the second page, you'll see that the services we will offer are rides, help with technology, changing household filters such as furnace and air conditioners, offering social events such as book discussions and help with household tasks such as cleaning and help in uh, cleaning places that are too high or too low, shoveling or help in the yard. Someone like me with a dislodged tendon in my right leg would use almost all of these services and be grateful to have them provided. For when you have a disability, it is sometimes very hard to reach out when you need something done. Someone, in your pay someone you're paying a, a slight fee to, which uh, the people would if they um, joined the village, um, they would be paying a slight fee and a lot of it would be easier if they could, they, that they could ask. Um, can we make things easier for older people who really need things, th these things done? We know we can and we know there's a lot of talent in this room to, so that we can uh, um, develop and use your experience. So what I'd like you to do is to fill out the card that I gave you and um, fill it out and hand it in to me at the end of the session and we'll go from there. We'll call you and see what your talents are and how you can fit into our organization and we'll go from there. Thank you very much for seeing the future with me. Um, I'm addressing my speech to Commissioner Shea, State Rep, and Raymond Hurd from the CMS, the Medicare and Medicaid office. My name is Sarah Walsh, and I've lived in Boston for 42 years. What I like about living in Boston is the wonderful hospitals and the really skilled physicians that we have here. What I would like to improve upon is home delivery of medication for, to seniors. And that would mean having all the pharmacies deliver, even the mom and pop. CVS, they kind of ruined my talk. They just started delivering three months ago. But, but there's a $5 fee. And for many seniors, that fee on top of the high price of their medication really can be a lot. No senior should have to decide between getting their medication or buying their groceries. And I have personally seen this as a visiting nurse and as a discharge liaison nurse in a major hospital here in Boston. 
they have no family and friends that are either willing or able or they're deceased. Um, one person I got to their house, he didn't have his insulin, and this is like life and death situation. So my advocacy group would start first at the city level with calling the Age Strong Commission just to get some advice as to where to go from there to see if they have any resources. And then also possibly being um, assessed for a home health aid, and then they can go do some errands for you. Uh, next, at the state level, we could check into um, ASAP, such as Ethos, and, and see if any funding resources would be there. And lastly, at the federal level, we could check with the CMS office, to, and they are currently working on bills to try to reduce this high, high cost of medications. Uh, my husband mentioned most seniors are taking five or more meds, so that uh, is a lot. So fixing this would make Boston more age-friendly by helping our seniors stay healthier in their communities. So will you help my group deliver to the seniors without a delivery fee? Thank you for your time and attention. I just wanted to sit down. <laughs> I told him I didn't give permission to film me. Congratulations. You're not. You didn't say how much you're Yes, I did. Good. Thank you. Um, I've run into uh, Mr. Justin Sterrett of the uh, City of Boston's budget office in the elevator, and I thought that was a good time to try out a couple ideas that I had. So, um, Mr. Starrett, I just so so happy to have run into you today in the budget process, and I know you're considering the various agencies, including the Age Strong Commission's budget request. Um, I'm just a citizen. I. Uh, have lived in Boston in the North End 45 years and have been a volunteer in all kinds of different situations. And, and now being elderly, I have gotten more involved with elderly issues. And I know that the city of Boston's budget um, is very, very tight. and. I'm going to propose just some ideas to the uh, Age Strong Commission. And in doing so, it occurred to me that you were integral to this because they have a lot of other activities that they have taken on responsibility for. And they're going to look, if I have a great idea and they adopt that, uh, goal, uh, then they're going to come to you next to seek additional help to achieve these goals. So I'm sort of uh, intervening where maybe I don't belong. But my greatest, I, I listening to all the concerns of everybody at the Civic, uh, the Boston Civic Academy, uh, which I attended this year. Um, it, it, it's, uh, there's all kinds of things that everybody cares about, and every one of them is more meaningful than the next one. But I happen to be interested in nutrition because it cuts across all, um, all aspects of life, all ages, all economic uh, levels. And so that's the thing I really want to press on I really think that um, based on the impact that the Age Strong Commission is having now of serving 477,000 meals 
and giving 38,000 rides. I think that those uh, efforts can be a source of people to introduce the concepts of nutrition. And I mean, let's use the time people are sitting on the ride, waiting for the ride, and et cetera. It's a win-win situation. It doesn't cost anything extra, and it could benefit a lot of people if we could get across a few very simple, um, basic ways to improve our nutrition. Not a chart, but a bag of beans and a recipe, and I hope that these simple ideas can get some traction. Thank you. So I'll be speaking to the general manager of the MBTA and the city of Boston transportation director. Hi, my name is Howard Katz. I live in Jamaica Plain, and I've lived in Boston uh, for 34 years. And I'm grateful I'm able to get around on the T and not have to own a car. But on the orange line between Back Bay and Forest Hills, there's this lack of station name signs in the station so that when you're on the train and you're looking out the windows and trying to figure out where you are, it's often difficult to do that. And this is especially bad with the um, Ruggles or Oxbury Crossing and um, Jackson Square stations, which are exactly alike, so you really need those signs. Uh, now, um, I do yoga almost every day, and I've done this for uh, several decades, and I'm more flexible than most. But when I'm sitting on an orange line car and I crane my neck trying to see, a sta trying to find a station sign, which, which sometimes doesn't exist, it hurts. This is not good. So. I'm asking for, um, to start, for Ruggles, Roxbury Crossing, and um, Jackson Square stations, station signs such that uh, on the uh, tunnel walls and over the platform so that wherever you are sitting on a train, um, you can see at least one sign. And I'm asking for this by 1231, uh, 2019. Thank you. <laughs> Station I'm at sometimes. Mm -hmm. All right. No, it's always here. Hello, everyone. My name is Julia Walker. I've lived in Dorchester for 56 years. I moved from Florida to Boston. Big difference in the weather. I want to thank the mayor's office, the mayor and his staff, the Age Strong Commission, and all of the speakers for the very helpful information that I learned in the past six weeks at the Civic Academy. My advocacy is being able to stay in my home for as long as I can. Being near grocery stores, hospitals, and all of the things that the city of Boston does for seniors. What I want to improve and advocate for is necessary home repair and upkeep for seniors with low income. I last year I used the city home repair program. An advocate was hired, uh, was assigned to me, but he seemed more of an advocate for the contractor than he was for me. I want to advocate that the city program hire contractors that are dependable, follows the contract, 
have qualified workers, be honest and complete the job. Last but not least, that the advocate does his job with no excuses. Thank you. Hello, my name is Sandra Clark. I've lived in the Dorchester neighborhood of Boston for 60 years. Living in Boston, I like that I am able to use public transportation. This is personal to me. A close friend of mine has issues with the T-Ride. Sometimes when two people are being picked up, you may be 30 minutes late. Again, sometimes it may take up to two hours to be picked up. I understand transportation network companies like Uber and Lyft, who are now going on strike, Per Boston Independent Drivers Guild, Felipe Martinez told WBUR he's asking passengers who use the ride sharing app to take public transportation. Again, seniors who are unable to are left with inadequate transportation services who are paying a monthly fee. We need to do better or future references. Thank you, Senior Civic Academy Age Strong Commission. Well, first of all, I did the assignment a little different because I made up my own bill. <laughs> all right. And second, I, I decided that I was going to be talking to some official, but I didn't write their name down. So I don't think that matters, right? OK, so now I'm starting. Hello, my name is Diane Bullivance. As one of your constituents, I've lived in the Boston area since 1975. I really like the livable, safe, and convenient environment. However, the thing that makes it hard for me to live here is my high rent. This is because increasingly important because my retirement cannot keep up with the this year's 300% rental increase. My landlord's grandchildren have inherited the house I live in and decided to make this increase. I understand that my story is not that unusual in Boston. There are no rental increase protections for seniors in this area. If the problem isn't solved, then many seniors may become homeless. Fixing this would make Boston more age-friendly and safer by stabilizing neighborhoods with long-term residents. To fix this issue, we need to protect retirees 62 years and older from no more than a rental increase based on Social Security's cost of living adjustment. Will you support us through voting in favor of Bill 222? Thank you for your support. Thank you.